The truth about being a hopeless romantic. Hi guys, my name is Christine and I'm a dating, relationship and personal development coach. And today I'm talking about the truth about being a hopeless romantic. So my definition of a hopeless romantic is someone that has a really flawed way of looking at love, like an idealistic way of looking at love. Very much someone who is has a kind of like a poetic look towards love. Um, someone who sees love in this kind of way that um, thinks perhaps being in love and loving someone enough is enough to keep them around or to get them to fall in love with you. But the truth is, is that things like love, especially this kind of like romanticized version of love, this very William Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet way of looking at love is extremely flawed. And in fact, um, the, the, the Romeo and Juliet story is one that was actually supposed to be a warning. Like it wasn't supposed to be this big romantic thing. It was supposed to be served as, hey, look at these two stupid young couples. Um, look at these two young people that fell in love with each other and look what they did. You know, they killed themselves to be so they could, because uh, they couldn't live without each other basically. And it was supposed to be a warning. It wasn't supposed to be something romantic. So, you know, having this idealistic look, way of looking at love is actually really, really flawed. And the reason I know this is because I used to be a hopeless romantic. I used to be someone who would write poetry, write love letters, um, listen to Endless Love by Lionel Richie on repeat. You know, I was one of those people that loved love. Um, and uh, I think from even an early age, I knew at some point I would be talking about love at some kind of level. Um, I just thought that I would be talking about the more romantic side and not actually the real truth about love. Now, the thing about love is love is actually more of an action, a doing word, than a feeling. Um, and why, obviously, because love is, um, when you get into a relationship, love is those little acts of kindness that you do for the person that you love and care about. The feeling love is more like the... Um, it's something fleeting, it's something that doesn't stay around. Um, like love could be um, just when you're kind of looking at your partner or your girlfriend or boyfriend, uh, husband or wife and admiring them for a moment, but that feeling kind of disappears. Love, the action, is something that happens in between those feelings. But obviously, of course, you'll have moments where you really adore and love your partner, but there are gonna be times when you could go for weeks where you don't actually have that feeling anymore and you might feel like something's wrong. But love is actually more of a doing word and action. So that's when you make your girlfriend or boyfriend a cup of coffee in the morning or when you wash their clothes or um, when you hold their hair back when they're you know, being sick in the toilet or something, um, uh, cleaning um, their uh, bag or something to um, make it look more nice or something, you know, clearing out the clutter of their bag or something. You know, doing, doing these kinds of little things, um, that's love, right? That's what love is actually supposed to be more like, and that's the kind of thing that you need to focus on. So, you know, if you really want to love someone more, let's say you're in a relationship and you don't really feel it anymore, like the best way for you to actually start loving your partner more and start developing more of those love feelings is to actually keep on doing more acts of kindness for your the person that you love and keep on looking after them. Because the more time and the more action and the more stuff you invest into a person, the more you will love them. Um, and you can do this with like your friends as well, like test it out. Do you have a friend that is kind of like an acquaintance and something like that? Someone who you don't really, you kind of talk to, but you don't really care that much about, right? As a, um, uh, uh, a goal, right? Just start speaking to them more, like ask them every day how they're doing or how their work was, you know, message them and reach out to them and um, ask how they are. You know, you don't have to do it every day, but maybe like, you know, once or twice a week, just reach out to them and say, hey, how are you? And you'll start to see that you are getting more invested in that friend. You're starting to care more about that friend because you're starting to invest more of your time and your energy into that person. And that's basically how you keep love going for a long time. Don't just rely on the feeling 
feelings. And this is something that the hopeless romantic fails to do. They just focus on the feelings, on the romance of it all, on the love, on the poetry, on the um, inspirational feelings, right? And they fail to, to think about these other kinds of things. So um, I want to give you a, an example of the hopeless romantic um, and why being a hopeless romantic doesn't really work out. And this is a fictional um, example. So the person that Esmeralda chooses in The Hunchback of Notre Dame, I don't, I don't quite know how the book goes, but I'm just going to go from the Disney movie. Um, Esmeralda chooses Phoebus over the other three guys in that movie. So there's like three guys who have all different perspectives on Esmeralda. So first of all, you've got Frollo, right? And now Frollo, he sees Esmeralda as like a witch, a demon, um, and he has this like desire to possess her. Like he wants to be with her, but he's willing to do all sorts of crazy stuff to get her. Um, he's like basically saying, if I can't have you, then no one can have you. And he's even willing to burn her at a stake and burn down all of Paris just because he wants to get with her. He wants to possess her. And he sees her as this kind of like demon witch thing that he just really desires and wants. And then you've got, um, Quasimodo, who is the hopeless romantic in this movie, and he sees Esmeralda as this perfect angel, and in the song Heaven's Light, he even describes her as an angel. He thinks she's this perfect being. Um, uh, and then you've got Phoebus, who she ultimately picks, and the reason why she picks Phoebus is because he sees her as a human being. He doesn't see her as a demon witch, like what Frollo does. He doesn't see her as an angel, like what Quasimodo does. He sees her as the human being that she is, and you can kind of tell this from their chemistry together. So when Phoebus and Esmeralda have scenes together, you'll see that there's kind of like this playful banter, this subtle flirtation, um, and he understands her as a human woman, rather Rather than some evil witch demon and or a perfect angel like what Quasimodo does. And that's ultimately why Esmeralda falls in love with Phoebus and not Frollo or Quasimodo. And unfortunately a lot of hopeless romantics see the object of their affection as a perfect angel pixie goddess or um, just the perfect creature when in reality they should be just seeing them as the human being that they are. And this is where I feel a lot of hopeless romantics go wrong. Um, they see these people that they love and they care about as these perfect angels, and it's just completely unrealistic. And they have an unrealistic view of love as well, and they think it's all about this feeling and emotion and inspiration, when really it's more of something that you do for another person um, and how much time you invest in that person um, than the actual emotion. Um, because again, like I said, those feelings of love can be fleeting and when they disappear for a period of time, you know, which they will in a relationship, they do, they, they kind of, it's kind of like this, like it comes and it goes, like there's kind of like a, I don't know, like a, a rhythm to it, right? It's not there all the time, that emotion's not there all the time. The attraction might be there all the time, but the feeling of like, ah, oh, you know, love, it might not be there all the time. And therefore you have to rely on um, actually doing acts of love because that is the more powerful way of loving someone anyways. So being a hopeless romantic is um, also leads to things like obsession. Um, and I know that because again, I used to be a hopeless romantic and I used to become very obsessed with um, the girls that I really liked. Um, so. Ultimately, um, being a hopeless romantic is a really foolish way of looking at love, and it's usually where the teenagers, like a, it's a very teenager kind of experience that a lot of teenagers go through, where they become like a, a bit of a hopeless romantic. Um, they kind of see it as, um, oh, if I can't be with that person, then I'll just always be alone, and being very dramatic about it. Um, when in reality, um, that's not really how love goes. And again, like the William Shakespeare. Um, Romeo and Juliet, that was supposed to be a warning, like, do not do this, do not be a silly, foolish teenager in love, be dependable, be reliable, um, your feelings will trick you, okay? Love is a much more uh, different thing than what it appears to be, and being a hopeless romantic will unfortunately lead you to places like friend zone, um, because basically if you treat someone like they're perfect, and you treat them like this angel perfect pixie um, goddess or celebrity, then um, 
they're going to freak out about it, right? The person who you're doing that towards is going to freak out about it and they're not going to understand why you have all this devotion towards them because they know they're a human being, they know that they're a flawed person and yet you're treating them like this perfect creature and they don't want to be treated like a perfect creature, they want to be treated like a normal human being, like how Phoebus treated Esmeralda. Um, and it's important then to forget about these feelings and being the hopeless romantic because if you if you treat someone like they are like that, they're gonna always put you in friend zone. They're always gonna put you in friend zone if you treat them in this way that, may, that you believe that they're perfect and they can do no wrong. Because obviously, first of all, they're not gonna be able to live up to that expectation. Secondly, they're gonna wonder why you went from zero to 100 because this is how things usually go when people get put in friend zone. They they meet someone that they like, um, they wait months and months to pluck up the courage to say that they like them and because so much time has gone by and they've been cr and they've been crushing on them for so long what happens is they suddenly are in love with them and then when they go to them instead of just asking them out on a date what they do is they say that they have feelings for them or I'm they may say I'm in love with you or they may write a long message or a love letter or send them a poem explaining how much they love them um and when that happens, this freaks the recipient out because they've gone from zero to 100. They thought that you two were just friends and now you're saying that you're in love with them and it makes them feel uneasy and makes them feel weirded out, which is why usually the person who has um, said all this stuff that has confessed their feelings gets put in friend zone. And it's all because they've all had this hopeless romantic mindset of, oh, I'm gonna wait for the perfect time and I'm gonna send them a love letter, I'm gonna confess how I feel to them. Um, instead of just doing what you should be doing, which is just when you start having that kind of attraction towards someone, you just simply ask them out on a date and see how things go. Forget the hopeless romantic stuff. That is something that has been created by novelists, by poets, uh, by people who make movies, by the TV shows. The hopeless romantic side to things is an art, right? It's not something that is you can use in, a, in this tangible human world, in human relationships. It's fiction, right? And it was all created by people that like to create fiction, right? Have, who have this idealistic ver, uh, vision of love and how it's supposed to be. And it would be nice if love was all about this powerful emotion. It would make life a lot more interesting if we could all just be hopeless romantics and people would, and love was enough and just having that desire would be enough to get someone to fall in love with you. But in reality, it's a much different situation. So leave the hopeless romantic feelings for the fiction, right, where it belongs and um, instead, look at the, the the look at love in a more realistic point of view, which is when you start developing feelings for someone, and you feel attracted to them, simply ask them out. Don't waste months pining over them. You know, imagining them in your brain, fantasizing about them. Just get on with it, right? If you like them, ask them out. Don't wait, and definitely do not confess your love to some un unknowing person who's gonna be completely blindsided by your affection, okay? So that's the truth about being a hopeless romantic. Unfortunately, it's not very fictitious, it's not very interesting, it's not very um, inspirational or moving. Um, in fact, it's just kind of a bit of a boring reality. Um, it's, it would be nice, again, if, if the hopeless romantic way of things worked, but it doesn't. And if you want to have a relationship, if you want to get married someday, if you want to settle down, if you want to be in a committed relationship, then stop focusing so much on the feelings, get on with it, ask them out, and remember that your feelings for them will be fleeting and they will go up and down throughout the duration of your relationship. So therefore, Focus on the action of love, doing kindnesses, asking about them, um, being, um, doing little acts of kindness for them, doing the actions of what love requires, um, instead of just relying on these feelings. If you'd like help with me personally, then please go to www.christineloveridge.com and, and you can get some coaching with me. Thank you so much for watching and I shall talk to you again very soon. Goodbye guys.